For reasons that utterly escape everyone involved, you're listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Here are your hosts, Gabe Howard and Michelle Hammer. You're listening to A Person Living with Bipolar, A Person Living with Schizophrenia, and a digital portable media file. My name is Gabe Howard, and I'm a person living with bipolar disorder. Hi, I'm Michelle Hammer, and I'm a person living with schizophrenia. Are you guys happy now? Yeah, see, we changed it for everybody. Oh my God, don't write us any more letters. <laughs> Please stay off our social media. Person first language, okay? I, I think we did it. I, I think, you know, by doing it this way, though, we have now wiped out discrimination. We've wiped out stigma. There's enough beds for everybody. Homelessness due to mental illness is gone. There's nobody incarcerated in prisons. By using person first language, we have solved all of those other problems, right? We must have. That's why person first language is always number one comment we get. Absolutely. Hang on. I'm, I'm getting a weird text message. Oh, Oh no, what happened? Yeah, it turns out we didn't do anything. We didn't do anything by yeah, using person first language? It, it didn't it didn't It matter. didn't solve any problems? No, now people are mad at us for mocking them. So. Oh no, <laughs> we mocked people. We never make fun of anything on this show. We're always so polite and professional and educational. Oh, we we never, never say fuck. We never just... say fuck or suck my dick or you're a cop. <laughs> God, Gabe, what are you laughing at? I'm being really serious right now. I'm a person living with schizophrenia, I, and I'm a person living with my past. You're a person living with on. your past. That you my dwell. past that I dwell on with my ruminations. Now I'm going to ruminate about this situation that I couldn't make the world better. I need to make the world better, Gabe. I need to make the world better. This is the worst segue in the history of our show. <laughs> And that, that's saying something because we've had some mighty awful segues. What are we doing? In case you haven't figured it out, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about things that we have ruminated on both before we were diagnosed, during like the recovery period where we we're trying to get better, and things that still kind of haunt us today. And we are going to desperately eke 20 minutes out of this. Desperately. So, Michelle, what are some ruminations that, like today, think of the last six months. As long-time listeners of the show know, we're in recovery. You are doing quite well, despite the fact that you're a schizophrenic. I am doing quite well, despite the fact that I'm living with bipolar disorder. We've gotten over mania, depression, psychosis, and everything in between. But we still ruminate on things because, one, everybody does. We, We should probably start there. Do you think that ruminating about things is the domain of only people with mental illness, or do you think that everybody ruminates? I think everybody ruminates to a certain extent. It's when ruminating, you just can't stop it, is when it really gets out of control. I like that we've challenged ourselves to put the word ruminating in this show as many times as possible. How do you spell this word? I have no idea. I have no idea. That's really a problem for the transcription. Should we define ruminating for people? Do it. Ruminating is when you can think of the same thing over and over and over again. You just cannot get it out of your head. It just goes around and around and around until it drives you nuts. So, for example, Michelle's mother, who has absolutely no mental illness to speak of, ruminates about why Michelle is a failure. Hey. It just, she can't get it out of her I head. I a failure. I didn't say that you were. I said that your mother ruminates about it. No, she does not. Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit. No, she does not. Okay, well, my mother, despite having no mental illness whatsoever, ruminates on whether or not I'm going to throw her under the bus on a podcast. Does she? I mean, probably. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think she gives a shit. I often ruminate why I was fired from any previous job. Do you ruminate about being fired from the job as a symptom of schizophrenia? Or is it just something that you wish you could go back in time and figure out? Well, it's more like different situations that happened and how I wish I could have handled them differently. But doesn't everybody do that? Like, do you ever do this? And be honest. I mean, sincerely, be honest. Remember, we value honesty. Do you ever get in a fight with your girlfriend and like, you're fighting, you're yelling, you're screaming, and then you retreat to separate corners, all is quiet, it's over, you've made up, and you think, God, I wish I would have said that. Or like you run through it in your mind. Maybe, but that's different than ruminating. Well, how is it different from ruminating? Because ruminating ruminating just doesn't stop. It'll go around and around and around. And even when I'm walking through the street, walking through anything, I almost will 
turn delusional and think I'm with those other people having that conversation, start getting angry, just start making the whole situation eight million times worse than it was because I keep thinking about it over and over and over and over and over and over again. It won't go away and it's, I hate it so much. In your mind, ruminating and delusions, they feed each other. Yes, absolutely. First, you're thinking about the thing. I got fired. They fired me. HR called. They walked me down. It was the seventh time I got. And by the time you're done, you're back in that time and place. You're feeling it again. And it's like it's happening right now, even though it was three years ago. Yes. Wow. Does that still happen to you? Like in 2019, does this still happen to Michelle Hammer? Yes. What's the coping skill to get around it? Because you're a, you're a well-accomplished person. Honestly, Why do you care? Talking about the ruminating thoughts. Because when you talk about the ruminating thoughts, usually the person that you're talking to is going, "Why do you care so much about this?" You maybe talk it out a little bit and then you're like, "Wow, I you're right. Who cares about this dumb stupid person or this story or anything about the situation? It's so useless why am I thinking about it so much and you can't change the past anyway you're right I talked it out now I feel better but but can't you kind of change the past can't you remember it differently can't you edit it in your mind can't you fix the things that have gone wrong previously in the future just like with different people you mean like learning from your past nah learning sounds mature and we don't really like that here Okay, so then I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Here's a good example. I'm on my third marriage. My wife is wonderful and I love her. And and this marriage has stood many, many years and I have no complaints. I want to say that right now. But I've been divorced twice. Not nasty divorces, but, you know, things that didn't feel good. And I've been through breakups, etc. So every now and again, my wife will do something and it will remind me of something that my ex-wife did. And I'll think, wait a minute. You know, I let that go when wife number two did it. So I have to fix it with wife number three, even though they're a completely different person. It's a completely different time and nothing is the same except for maybe like one little thing. Don't you ever do that? Like, don't you ever try to set a boundary with your current friend that you didn't set with your last friend that is now your like mortal enemy? No. No? (laughs) No. Something that I do, I know I with my anxiety... I'll put, I'll put on other people is that I'll start asking them a million questions about things. And then they're like, why are you asking me a million questions? And I'm just like, oh, it's my anxiety. I just wanted to know the time. I just wanted to know the place. I just wanted to know what you're going to do after. I wanted to do something you did before. I'm like, I'm just anxious. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to know if that makes any sense. I certainly do that too. You know, like that constant time checking thing. But you don't want to be late. Yeah. So what time is it? It's four o'clock. Okay. We have to be there at 430. What time is it? It's 4.01. Okay, we have to be there at 4.30. What time is it? Dude, it's still 4.01. But, you know, some of the things that are trapped in my head that I just can't get out are just what a bad friend I was or what an awful son I was or what a terrible family member I was. Yeah, And yeah. And sometimes I get mad at the people around me because I assume that they're still mad at me because I'm still mad at me. D- does stuff like that ever happen to you? I mean, I still hold a lot of vendetta against my brother, which I've been told is really... Oh, yeah, you're pissed at him. Right. Everyone says that I just dwell on the past. Even he says that I just, like, stay on the past about when we were younger, me and my brother, and how mean he was to me, and everything, how we would see each other in the hallway of high school, and he wouldn't even say hello to me. Yet when he went off to college, and we were still using AIM, and he would instant message me, I would not reply. So he wouldn't speak to me when he saw me in high school in the hallway, yet... I stopped replying to him on IM when he went off to college, and that was not okay, which makes no sense to me. Yet now we haven't seen each other in a long time because he lives in another country, and when he comes back, I now have to be nice to him because I guess he's a different person now. Yet I never got any kind of apologies or anything like that, but I'm supposed to see that he's a different person now. I don't know why. And we're supposed to be good friends now or something like that, I guess. Just out of curiosity, I don't really know Michelle, why. I'm just wondering. Is your brother a different person now? Apparently he's <laughs> a different person now. I don't know. But I he don't left know, the I don't country know to get changed. away from you. I don't know where it changed, but I'm supposed to treat him differently now. I'm supposed to forget everything from the past, all of the abuse from the past, and I'm supposed to uh, like him now. You I don't haven't know described any abuse. What you described is a couple of oh, okay. siblings that didn't lot, talk no, to um, each other. No, well, okay. Um, was he mean to you? Did he call your name? Wait, did well, he pull he your pigtails? Well, he took karate, and he would practice all of his karate moves on me. Constant wrestling, slamming my head into the ground until my nose bleeds, calling me Michael instead of Michelle, 
calling me a boy, that kind of went with Michael, slamming the door in my face, not letting me play with him, like when we're very little, try to use his toys, not allowed to use his toys. Actually, when my mom and dad came home with me from the hospital when I was born, and they said, oh, Seth, you know, here's your sister. He threw a stuffed animal at me. Yeah, I don't know why they told me that story. So he's your older brother. Yes. Because you said that he threw a stuffed animal at you when you came home from the hospital and they told you that story and you're, you're putting this together with all of the other issues that you had with your brother growing up when you were kids. Yeah. In my life. He broke my necklace too and then blamed me for it because he said I was being annoying. So he had to push me and my necklace got in the way and it broke. This is fabulous that you bring this up and here's why. Yeah. Because in my brother and sister's world, I'm your older brother. I was the oldest. I was incredibly jealous of my brother. One time to get him in trouble when we were kids, I took syrup out of the pantry and I dumped it on the floor so that I could frame him for doing it, knowing that he'd get in trouble. My mother just happened to be moving faster than normal that morning and watched me do it. And even though she saw me do it, I still tried to blame him for it. <laughs> Absolutely unequivocally just hated having him as a brother. I was top dog. I was the oldest. I used to live with grandma. Then my mother remarried. And nine months later, I got this bastard in my house. And I treated him like absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. My favorite was when he would say, you're stupid. And I would say, no, you're stupid. And then he would say, well, I'm smarter than you. So if I'm stupid, how dumb are you? You know you're an adult now, right? I know. But obviously, I cannot get over this because I don't understand why I'm supposed to like him now when I never received any kind of apology. What kind of apology do you want when you were growing up? Maybe just, I'm sorry I was a horrible asshole to you and ignored you for years and everything like that. Listen, I, I never, ever, ever told my brother and sister, I'm sorry I was a horrible asshole to you. Ever. So then I don't understand. Why do I have to accept him back in my life? I mean, you don't. But do you feel good right now? I'm being told by everybody in my family that I need to accept him back in my life. Okay, well, fuck him, don't. Just sit around and think about how pissed off and angry 8, 12, and 15-year-old Michelle was. Hang on one second. We got to hear from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. Want us to answer your questions on the show? Head over to psychcentral.com slash BSP questions and fill out the form. We're back still trying to say the word rumination as many times as humanly possible. You're 30 years old. You've moved on with your life, but you're still thinking about shit that happened to you when you were literally eight years old. Okay, I see where you're going with this. How's that working out for you? I don't see him. I don't have to speak to him. And then my mom says, have you spoken to your brother? Do you text them? Have you spoken to him? Yeah, I don't like that you guys don't have a relationship. Why do my children hate each other? Well, I mean, you articulated why y'all hate each other. I know. I'm just saying. I mean, just she ha says. has he done anything to you as an adult? Let, let's establish that like right out. In the time that you both became adult, grown people, has he been fine? Well, when I graduated college, he was working at like kind of in the design agency kind of area. His boss, the creative director... He wanted to give me some advice, so he brought me in and he looked at my portfolio and his boss said to me, I like your stuff. I want to give you some help. I, I wanted to offer you like a part-time internship here, but your brother said no. Well, but you don't know if that's true. His boss said it to me. Yeah, but so what? People lie all the time. No, that's 100% something my brother would do. Why would he lie and say, I would offer you an internship here, but your brother said no? Because Why would he invite me to come there and look at my portfolio and see all of my work? And give me advice. Why would he offer to do that? If he was going to tell you no, why did he do it at all? He was just giving me advice. And he just said that he wanted to offer me an internship. He would totally do that for me. But my brother said no. So your brother was the boss of his boss? My brother said, do not hire her as an intern. Then why did he talk to you at all? Because he wanted to give me advice. Did you ask your brother about this? No. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't want to start a fight. I, but I kind of smell a rat here. No, I don't smell a rat here. Obviously, Gabe, you don't know my brother if you don't believe this story. 
just it doesn't have the ring of truth. It actually does very much ring true. Okay, let's say that that is completely true. It's one hundred percent true. Okay, it's one hundred percent true. Say that it rings true. Okay. It's one hundred percent. All right, it's one hundred percent true. I yes. agree. How yes. long ago was that? How many years? Um, I believe I was twenty-two. Okay, so it was. It's eight years ago. Eight year, everybody, Michelle. You said adult years. life, Gabe. I was bringing up something in my adult but, life. But that's that's so minor. It's just so minor. You said something in my adult life. I, I, there you I, go. I do not. You're very upset. He didn't upset want me to work. This. He didn't want me to work in the same place as he was working. I, you are very upset by this. You said adult life. There you I, go. You right there. You keep repeating that. But that's also, my brother lives in Columbia. Columbia, the country, not the college. People have gotten that very mixed <laughs> up before. People did have you, been very mixed up. Did you throw your brother out of the country? Um, I'm glad he left. Okay. <laughs> um, meanwhile, you know who's never been invited to Columbia to come see him? I'm going to go with you. Yes. Do you think the reason you've never been invited is because you hate him? He's never invited me. Because you hate him? Well, he's never invited me. Because you hate him? He's never invited me. Have you invited him to your house? He's been to my apartment. He's been there. You're upset about this, aren't you? Well, we're dwelling on the past, Gabe. You want to have a relationship with your brother, don't you? We do not get along. I didn't say, do you get along? I said, do you want to get along? I want him to acknowledge what he's done. But why do you want him to acknowledge what he's done? Because he I, I'm, acts I'm being, so innocent. I'm being really serious. Like, like he acts like he did nothing wrong, and then the past is of the past, and I should ignore it. Listen, here's what I'm saying. You think about the things that happened as a kid and as a young adult a lot, and it brings it up. You are clearly unhappy about this, and other members of your family know that you're unhappy about this and try to fix it, albeit apparently poorly. And I completely agree that all of these things are true. The question that I have for you, and this is the only question that I want you to answer, do you want him to apologize because you want an apology? Or do you want him to apologize because you miss your brother and you want to mend the relationship? Yes, I would like to mend the relationship. Okay, well then say that. Say that the reason that you think about this so much is because you're sad that you're fighting with your brother. Listen, I've had friends who've met my brother on multiple occasions and have told me, your brother's a dick. Yeah, he sounds like a real dick. I, I Listen, just I, I'm saying, not... I'm just saying. I, I'm not saying that he's not. My friends have said, your brother's a dick. I'm saying that you need to understand your own motivation. Because until you do, I don't think you're going to get over it. And I think a lot of our listeners have somebody in their life that they feel this way about. Whether it's a friend, a family member. In, in some cases, it's like a parent or a guardian. It's somebody who helped raise them or an authority figure. And they're all ruminating on this day in and day out. And if they don't fix the relationship or get over the relationship, it either A, handcuffs them in the present, like it's handcuffed you, because you're thinking about this right now, and it is occupying way too much of your space for some dude who doesn't even live in the country. Or two, you just need to let it go and decide, hey, look, this relationship isn't for me, and stop thinking about it. Frankly, I don't think any of this has anything to do with schizophrenia, and I think it has everything to do with the fact that familiar relationships, our family, our friends... That's the kind of stuff that fucks you up. The end. I think what it has to do with schizophrenia is the fact that I'll think about it. It'll just creep into my head and it creeps into the deep, dark depths of my head and it'll just go around and around and around and around. You want to know around. who my big brother is? You want to know who does that for me? You want to know who creeps into my head and just turns around and around and it won't let go ever? Who? My biological father. Uh -huh. The dude is dead. Really? He is dead. And I think about him the exact same way you think about your brother. Really? Yeah, he's dead. He can't apologize. He can't make up for it. It's over. I won because I didn't die of alcoholism. I can't get why. Why did he hate me? That's he, all I can think about. Why did he hate me? And now you're going to do the exact same thing that I just did for you. You're going to be like, dude, he didn't hate you. He was a dick. He was an alcoholic. He abandoned his kid. This is the level no, that I we get torture that, though, ourselves. When, when, when a parent chooses alcohol over a kid, I can understand why the kid feels very upset. Oh, look, I don't think he chose alcohol over me. I think he chose literally anything. I think he would have chosen like a blowing leaf I mean, over sometimes me. a father is just a sperm. Yeah. You know? I call him my sperm donor. Yeah. That's sometimes just what a father is. But this is the biggest rumination that I have because I wonder how did he know on the day that I was born that I was broken and worthless? How come he knew what nobody else can figure out? He didn't know that. But I mean. He knew he was broken and worthless. Nah, he didn't know that. He had a good life. He was happy. He died fine. No, he wasn't happy. He was an alcoholic. 
Yeah, a happy one. No, there's no happy alcoholics. Eh, you know that whole self-medicating thing? It does apply sometimes. I don't think he was self-medicating at all. I think he was just a guy that did whatever he want and said whatever he want and behaved however he want. Just immature, you think? I, sure. Not I just, ready to be a dad? I mean, he was very young. My mother got pregnant in high school, and he was also in high school. So Okay, that he, makes a little... But, but he I, never yeah, he made was... up for it. I saw yeah. him on his deathbed. He was in hospice. He had jaundice. His eyes were yellow. They told him he had less than two weeks to live. And I'm like, do you have anything to say to me? And he was like, it's your mom's fault. That's what he said? That's pretty much what he said. He's yeah. a dick. Okay. He's, yeah, he's you're, an incredible you're dick. Your biological dad, he's a dick. But why can't I get over it? Because he's your dad. Eh, I got a dad. He's alive. He lives in Memphis. He's cool. Because he's a part of you. Eh, I'm not trying to be crass here, but he's just a guy who had sex with my mom. I, I appreciate so like, the DNA. You get, if you can say that, then why can't you get over it? Exactly. And that's why it ruminates. Because the intellectual part of Gabe Howard. So and are be you honest, mad at your mom for inter- boning this dude? No. Well, I mean, I'm mad at my mom for giving me life, but that's like a whole nother episode. <laughs> I don't understand why I got to be born and why I have to be born broken and why I'm here. But there's but, a but that's, reason that's why like, you're here and there's a purpose why you're here, Gabe. I don't, I don't believe that purpose. Reasoning. I believe that, Gabe. There's you, always a reason why you're here. You, you believe in vape pens <laughs> You and... believe in Diet Coke. Maybe there's a universe with no Diet Coke. That's mean. And you're not there. That's mean. You're here. That's mean. You're here That's to mean. drink Diet Coke. Michelle, seriously. Seriously. None of this is serving either one of us. So why do we do it? Because it I... doesn't go away. And why doesn't it go away? I don't know why it doesn't go away. Exactly. Judging by our emails, a, a lot of our listeners have this problem where they just have this thing that they just can't get over. And if they have learned nothing by listening to this show, it's that they're not alone. A lot of people have these things that they just can't get over. And I think that anybody listening to me and you for the last 20 minutes would think, wow, these two need to get over that because it's not serving them in any way. Just a little bit, don't you think? But we're not letting it go. I I hope that maybe they listen to us and they realize how unhelpful this is to just not get over and they think, wow, I don't want to be like them. And they let go of their anger and the things that they're just ruminating on and can't get over. But I suspect that a lot of people are going to hang on to that rumination. And I hope that they find some way to minimize it. Because at the end of the day, Michelle, we have minimized it. It is not impacting us the same way at our current age that it probably did 10 years ago. Do you think you think about this less now than you did five years ago? Oh, definitely. Much less. So there really is some wisdom in time heals all wounds. And, you know, living in another country. So I had to kill my biological father. You had to send your brother to another country. And now suddenly we're getting better. That's fantastic. That is definitely actionable advice. Everybody is excited that they listen to this episode of a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Because now they can beat their own ruminations with death and deportation. Yes. Not every episode can be a winner, ladies and gentlemen. But we hope you got something out of it. Thank you for tuning into this episode of a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. Don't forget to hop over to store.psychcentral.com. There's a few shirts left. This is the last time, literally the last time, we will ever pitch the Define Normal shirts on this show. So if you have been hanging on wanting to buy one, now is the time. Thank you, everybody. Please like us everywhere, and we will see you next time. He's a dick. You've been listening to a bipolar, a schizophrenic, and a podcast. If you love this episode, don't keep it to yourself. Head over to iTunes or your preferred podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. To work with Gabe, go to GabeHoward.com. To work with Michelle, go to Schizophrenic.nyc. For free mental health resources and online support groups, head over to PsychCentral.com. The show's official website is psychcentral.com slash BSP. You can email us at show at psychcentral.com. Thank you for listening and share widely.